Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to another episode here on the Full Press Saints podcast. Once again, everybody, make sure you follow us on Twitter at SaintsFPC. Uh, once again, it's your host, the one with the most. Not really a, a broke college student, but point being, Alec here on the show again today. Joined by my great co-host, Dayton Brown. Dayton, how are we Sheesh. doing today, sir? Sheesh. I thought that's what you were doing at first. I thought you were doing the sheesh. But that was a great intro. We always have different intros every episode. I like that we mix it up. I like to mix it up. Keep I like us, that keep, you mix it up. Keep us on the toes, uh, if you get what I mean. But once again, guys, we have a very special guest on today with us. He's a uh, works for NFLanalyst.com. He's contributed to the Who Dat Dish podcast. Also has his own show, the Michael Balaco Show, of course. And of course, the one and only Michael Balaco, sir. Thank you for coming on with us today. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on today, fellas. Hey, appreciate it. Always, always. Uh, so, gentlemen, we have a great show lineup for everybody today. Getting a little bit some Saints draft talk. Uh, play around with what we're doing at 28. Uh, and, of course, some interdivisional new, divisional news came up these last couple of days. I haven't said a little bit. Um, before we get to that, uh, last week, Michael, we talked about some of our favorite Drew Brees moments throughout his the legendary career. Just kind of curious, did you have anything in particular uh, that really sticks to you as far as what you can remember about the career of number nine? Man, everything, really. I mean, <laughs> the, du- <laughs> the dude, the dude's just like the ultimate professional. You know, I've had the pleasure of talking to some of Drew Brees' teammates throughout the time of my podcast and whatnot, and they all say the same similar thing, and it's that his work ethic is really as the media hypes it up to be. Like, the dude really is out there on his bye weeks preparing for a game that he's not even playing in that week. He could be at home chilling with his family, and instead he's out there just going through game simulations, you know, and it's crazy. But uh, as far as, like, games, uh, like, there's just three big games that really stick out to me. Obviously, when in the Super Bowl and him holding up his son with the confetti coming down and mm-hmm. all of that, the notorious picture that everyone knows and loves. And then uh, breaking his passing yardage record on national TV, that, that nice bomb to Traquan Smith, obviously, was super, super cool to see. Um, and then the seven-touchdown pass game versus Jacksonville a few years back, that was one of my favorite games. My mom's a big Jacksonville Jaguars fan, so, you know, I had to – had to see Drew Brees tear them to tell them tear them apart real quick. So that was go. obviously pretty sweet. So <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, yeah, love to hear that. And one more thing before we get into any more serious talk here, uh, I gotta know this: Are you a Kong or Godzilla guy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely a Kong guy. Hey, okay. Mm. Now, Dave, I mean, what what are you, Dave? Are you Kong or Godzilla? Mm, I mean, they both. I mean, King Kong has stayed. You know. King Kong is King Kong throughout whatever movie, whatever you want to slightly change somewhat. Godzilla has been around forever, and he has so many different forms. I'm going to go with Godzilla just off the fact that, I mean, he's a dragon. I mean, sometimes he can breathe fire. Sometimes he has, like, I mean, usually always has some sort of radioactivity. Kong is kind of just a big old gorilla, but Kong is the underdog, and I like rooting for the underdog. So it's kind of tough for me. But but actually, I want to say something real quick before we get into anything. Uh, I hope both of you and everybody listening had a great Easter. Um, I don't yep. think Michael got the proper introduction uh, because not only is he a, a site expert over at NFL uh, NFLanalysis.net, um, also worked for Hudat Dish, which is where I originally got my start writing and doing the podcast for them. So cut from the same cloth, love to see that. But also, Michael is the man with some sauces legit sources uh one of the one of the best guys to follow on twitter for some insider information he's hit on a lot over the last few months that's partially why i wanted to get you on the show of course a lot of the free agency waves have kind of already gone over um but uh it's going to be interesting to pick your brain about because you know a lot about how the saints are going to be looking into the draft and we'll get to that later and also uh just the inside works on how they're thinking to improve the team so i'm really excited to have michael on the show and it's been a couple weeks since we've recorded so it's good to be back I appreciate that intro. It's definitely nice to hear someone on Saints Twitter actually having my back for once. You yes, know? <laughs> I mean, first I never doubted you because I mean I I I know how crazy Saints Twitter can be. I'm definitely not one of those people who will like um, immediately uh, execute a guy based off of just anything. So when I see somebody's um, trending on Saints Twitter for whatever reason, you know you got to take that with a grain of salt because it's very passionate. 
but all I've known from you, Michael, is like, you know, spot on stuff. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, you've hit on a lot of major things over the last few months. So um, yeah, definitely Saints Twitter can get the best of people, which is unfortunate sometimes. But, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the Wild West out there in yes. Saints Twitter for sure. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, once again, Michael, awesome to have you on with us today. We'll get to a lot of great talks with you. Um, really quick, I'm one a big fan of the giant monkey. So Okay, I like so, that. So I, Con- I, I like the giant monkey. I was going to ask you if you were Conger, Conger Godzilla as a well. A Conger or a Ziller? A Conger or a Ziller. There you go. I like that. <laughs> so, that's, kinda, that's kind of uh, also the, like, I, f- I feel like King Kong is the definitely, like, the American answer. You know, like, of co- like I feel like a majority of Americans will, will tell you King Kong, not only because they're the underdog, but also, like, feel like kind of originates. I think everybody else in the world is going to tell you Godzilla because he's a freaking giant Nuclear dragon. fire breathing. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we love the underdogs over here, so. And giant monkeys. We love I, monkeys. We I just love, love monkeys. I love giant monkeys, nonetheless. R.I.P. Harambe. Hey, 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 hey. That's my boy right there. Uh, I said R.I.P. I, that's my boy. Um, we're scared Michael off here. Uh, let's, go, yeah. let's, get, let's get back to some, some NFL slash hate talk here. So, of course, the Carolina Panthers made the move yesterday for Sam Darnold, uh, hmm. sending over... Uh, two, a four, and I'm drawing a blank. That's sixth, I believe. Six, right. So, for Sam Darnold, who many, you know, you say what you want about Sam Darnold and what he's had with the Jets. Me, personally, I haven't seen a, a whole lot to really go with that argument and the idea of, oh, his lack of talent around him is just, that's the problem. I think Darnold hasn't really improved from what I've seen based on his days at USC. So I'm curious to get, you know, your guys' thoughts on this. I'll start with Michael here. So, I mean, the Panthers, do they really upgrade over Teddy Bridgewater here in your opinion, or do you kind of think the Panthers are kind of still where they are? Yeah, so, you know, it's it's hard to tell, obviously, because we really haven't seen too much from Sam Darnold in New York just because of the lack of talent. Um, I think it's an upgrade, but it's kind of a strange upgrade, if you ask me, because it's like they're upgrading over a guy who's very similar in a lot of ways. I mean, the general kind of consensus coming out of Carolina this offseason, the whole reason that they wanted to get rid of Teddy to begin with was because they wanted to be more mobile at the quarterback position. And I don't know if they necessarily have that with Sam Darnold. That's why it's a little bit kind of like, I mean, I tweeted about it yesterday. I was just like, wow. I mean, that's really all I could say. It's just wow, because it kind of just felt like the the Panthers are just in the mix for Deshaun Watson this whole time. I was kind of just, mm-hmm. it's, it almost kind of feels like the Panthers just kind of had to settle with what they could get because they got screwed out of Deshaun Watson is really what it seems like. Um, it's just, it just goes to show, I really don't think the Texans are willing to move Deshaun Watson, and that's why they ended up having to settle with the next best thing. Um, and that in that case is Sam Darnold, and they really got a steal for Sam Darnold, if I may say so mm-hmm. myself. I mean, dude's a high first round draft pick. I mean, and I mean, he's the sky's the limit for him, really. I mean, he's got so many weapons, and he's gets gets to reunite with Robbie Anderson, who they've they've had a strong connection in the past. So, yeah, I think I mean this first year is going to go and show a lot as to whether Sam Darnold's really a good quarterback or if he's just kind of a fluke. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. It's going to show a lot for sure. Yeah, Darnold's career is kind of an anomaly. I mean, high draft pick, kind of in. I mean, we see a lot of high draft picks go to dysfunctional organizations, but I don't think we've seen it to the point of the the Jets. I mean, they change head coaches just about nearly every year. Um, despite having so much cap space, it seems like every year they spend it in the wrong places. So it doesn't matter your quarterback talent. You're not going to be able to win games operating like that. So I am happy as a Sam Darnold believer, and I've been high on him ever since his days at USC, partially because I am a West Coast guy. I love rooting for West Coast players and whatnot. Um, I was really rooting for Sam Darnold. Obviously, he had the turnover concerns in college, and they kind of translated to the NFL, but it didn't really help with the system and the talent, like you mentioned, Michael, that he was surrounded by in New York. So I'm also very intrigued to see what's going to happen in a Matt Rule uh, offense with, of course, Joe Brady. Uh, He worked his magic down in LSU. Wasn't able to, I mean, it was his first year in Carolina last year, wasn't able to get much going with Teddy Bridgewater. Um, And the Teddy Bridgewater situation is now very interesting. Now, and like, what happens with him? I know a lot of Saints fans really want him to come back at his current contract. That's just not possible. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, a- anything can happen really with him. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, the Panthers could definitely just sit with both of them uh, for at least this year. Maybe have a quarterback competition. Um, but yeah, they gave up a second and a fourth next year and a sixth this year. 
So, I mean, it's a little, I mean, if they are a bad team this upcoming season, that second round pick is going to be very, very valuable. But the fourth and the sixth, I mean, you know, those are, those can be crapshoots depending on who, especially if you're the Jets uh with with their draft record i mean they're probably if they, if they hit a stud in the draft with those picks anywhere they're probably going to trade them in a couple years so if i'm carolina i'm happy with this move um i agree i think that darnold is a slight upgrade over teddy bridgewater i mean bridgewater is i, I love teddy bridgewater but in a full season because we saw him with of course that limited time five games with with new orleans um but in a full season he's really the epitome of like a mediocre quarterback he doesn't do anything great um he does a lot of things good he doesn't really do one thing particularly great uh darnold is i would say he's a great uh improviser even though that can lead to turnovers i do think that he has that great quality and he also has great arm strength i mean the kid can sling the ball um and he's got the perfect body for a starting uh, quarterback no major injury concerns like teddy bridgewater has either i know that bridgewater has been healthy ever since he's bounced back from that but that still lingers in your mind um being a quarterback so um yeah overall i think that both teams won because the, the the jets now sitting at two definitely are going to be going with the quarterback mm-hmm. um and and it just kind of clears the the room for them and they get some extra draft capital for a guy they weren't really planning on keeping anyway um so but and that's really interesting alec too when we look at it now it's the panthers who made the move they're not going to be moving up for a guy likely now uh, mm-hmm. somebody like justin fields they're not going to sit and wait for trey lance most likely uh they're not going to try and dra- trade up for uh, just field Zach Wilson or anything like that. It seems like they're going to be sticking with these guys, maybe move back or go eight. So that has a lot of implications on this upcoming season for the Saints because of the fact that they play the Panthers twice a year and they could make it a very competitive division uh, between the Saints, the Bucks, and now the Panthers have a pretty big question mark next to them. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And, and it has a lot of implications for the Saints too. Yeah, I think you guys both hit a spot on, spot on there. And actually that goes into the second question here. You know, how this affects the Saints, you know, I think you look at Carolina, they're not picking at eight. They're probably going to go best player available. Maybe a guy like Rashawn Slater, um, you know, I don't think he's there, but maybe a guy like Kyle Pitts, who mm. many, many of you was a generational talent at the tight end position. So, I mean, what are you guys thinking? How does this affect the Saints and what they're going to do um, this upcoming season? Should Carolina be a team that maybe now with Darnold and with, you know, this rookie they pick at eight, you know, do the Panthers, the Bucks, do they scare you guys enough considering that Carolina has done this and the Bucks have kept most of the roster intact? I, the Panthers scare me more in 2022 just because of how many young guys they have who are still kind of developing. But, I mean, this offense is going to be really good, especially if Darnold is, you know, uh, plays as good as he was advertised coming into the NFL. Um, Robbie Anderson, as we mentioned, reuniting with him. Also, DJ Moore, he's one of the most underrated, if not the the most underrated receiver in the NFL. Yep. Um, And then if they're able to draft a weapon at eight, whether that be, I mean, Kyle Pitts would be fantastic. I think Kyle... This draft is going to be really, really interesting, and I want to pick Michael's brain a little bit later about it, just because the one through ten spots are... It's kind of like last year, too. They could have won any besides, you know, the top pick. Uh, you don't know really what's going to happen afterwards. And, and I really like the kind of mystery because there's a lot of good prospects for guys because they could go with somebody at eight like Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase. If he if he falls, he he might not be the first wide receiver taken off. He could fall. Um, of course, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle are going to be there uh, most likely. So, I mean, the, the Panthers, if they want to beef up that offense even more, they could go there. I, I like the idea of going offensive tackle. Um, but I think their offense is going to be really great this year. Their defense is going to improve. Of course, they got first-round draft pick from last year, Derek Brown. Jeremy Chin was an outstanding rookie. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm more scared of the Panthers in 2022 than this upcoming season, but their offense, I think, is going to be one to reckon with for sure if you're the Saints. So. Yeah, what do you think yeah, I kind of yeah, I I kind of agree with what Dayton just said. It's just kind of the same thing. Uh you know, the Panthers are now in a very good position to not have to take a quarterback in the first round and hope he hits. It's more or less just like they have a quarterback that was a high draft pick a few years back who they can who they now have traded for and now they have that number 8 pick that they didn't have to get rid of in order to get Sam Darnold. And it's just like they they have a ton of opportunities. They could trade back, which I think would be a smart decision, kind of build up, add some additional picks, because this is a pretty deep draft all through 
probably the first like I'd say four rounds you have starting caliber yeah. potential um, and just kind of just acquire some like maybe throw in a, an extra third or maybe a second even I mean the number eight pick is valuable so you could get that right. first round pick and then you could also probably pick up another second so then you'll have two second round picks and a first I mean you don't really have any dire needs outside of the quarterback position I mean obviously getting Kyle Pitts if he's still there if he looks like he's falling obviously stick with the pick but I don't think he's going to fall past like Atlanta or those teams. But um, in terms of how it directly affects the Saints, though, I, as a Saints fan, I think we, we, we're we all pretty happy that it's Sam Darnold we have to face twice a year instead of like Deshaun Watson or oh, maybe sure. <laughs> or maybe even Justin Fields even or one of these high caliber quarterbacks that could have been drafted, Trey Lance even. Like I would yeah. much rather go against Sam Darnold because there's film on him and playing in the NFL at that. And there's film of him with Robbie Anderson and there's film of Mm. him with certain guys. And it's just, um, so I would much rather go against Sam Darnold twice a year. Um, And then another kind of thing that I've, I've always kind of mentioned on other people's podcasts and whatnot is who would you rather kind of go against twice a year? Would you rather go against Deshaun Watson or would you rather go against Christian McCaffrey? And I would personally rather go against Christian McCaffrey because the whole big thing was like, if, if the, if the Panthers were going to get Deshaun Watson, Christian McCaffrey was gone. So yeah. it's just kind of who would you rather go against? And I think it's a much easier to get a, take a running back out of the game like McCaffrey than it is a quarterback, obviously. So the fact that they had to downgrade and take Sam Darnold and they kind of just have to hope they can get the ball to, to a guy like Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield and you know hope that they have a connection right away. I, I, I like Sam Darnold going to the Panthers a lot more than I like any of these other guys for sure. Yeah, he's definitely going to be playing with the best running back ever that he's he's ever played for. It's going to be exciting to watch. <laughs> I'm interested to see how he's going to do in that offense, uh, the like scheme wise. Because, I mean, you go from Todd Bowles, defensive minded coach, then to Adam Gaze, who is a mess, and now you get Matt Rule, Joe Brady. You get a really stout. I think this offense is going to be going to be really good. But if the Panthers do trade from eight, it's going to be interesting. Because it's uh, rumors right now are that the Falcons are listening to offers for the uh, fourth overall pick, um, as they should. As right, exactly. Yeah, because again, they're Falcons are in like a purgatory, right? They're not really, they, even though they've done bad, they're not really in a rebuild, right? They're still kind of holding on to the hopes of the ghost of MVP Matt Ryan, who you know <laughs> has um, stayed somewhat decent. It's it's more so the defense and just the yeah, coaching, but. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, and, and it makes even more sense for the Falcons if they do trade back from four and they still stay in the top 10. I mean, you pick up draft capital and you're still going to be able to get a guy, you know, that can compliment whatever. I mean, if they move back to a spot like seven or nine, they theoretically, unless the quarterbacks really do make a run in the top five, they could still land with their quarterback of the future and also pick up draft capital. Somebody like Trey Lance, if they wanted to go there. Um, so it'd be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so that would be two NFC South teams in the top 10 trading back. Um, and of course more draft capital is good for them, but getting a star player could potentially hurt the saints more, um, especially in the near future. So I'm all for that as well. Either way, good move for either team to, trade back i think this is a really interesting draft that you can still get good talent from and pick up more draft capital if you move back so i just don't want kyle pitts on either team (laughs) agreed agreed hey i go ye really that's the one thing we do not want to happen come draft night but of course we never know how that works it's the nfl for a reason uh so really quick here uh michael i mean you're a guy who you know you're kind of tapped into you know, pretty much all sorts of levels when it comes to the Saints, uh, particular, in particular with you know draft day coming up. You know, we see we saw Jeff Ireland um, was at the pro day for Zayvon Collins. You know, the reports of Kyle Trask intriguing at the Saints has come out recently. Uh, so, what have you heard? Uh, you know, as, as far as the draft goes, or even even the second wave for agencies, anything really come up on your radar that you know maybe we should uh, keep an eye on here in the near future? Um, nothing really too crazy or unbelievable, really. Um, obviously, Zayvon Collins is on the radar. Uh, Jeff Ireland was there. The Saints are super high on Zayvon Collins. Um, mm. Unfortunately, I don't think he'll be there for the Saints at 28 unless they trade up to go get him. Um, so that's going to be that's going to be an interesting situation to watch. Obviously, there's there's only really other only one other really good running or linebacker 
other than Zayvon Collins in the drafts, in my opinion, and that's Micah Parsons. But with his character mm. concerns, people may be more lean, may lean towards taking like Zayvon Collins instead. So it's going to be interesting. Zayvon Collins obviously dominated everything at Tulsa. Mm-hmm. Everything. I mean, he was great in pass coverage. He had like five picks in his career. He was great in pa- rush passing, the, rushing the passer. Gosh, I can't even <laughs> talk today, fellas. But. Uh yeah, I mean Kyle Trask is kind of a second second to third round target for the Saints. Um depending on what the quarterback situation is looking like, what teams are like kind of the trend of the draft necessarily will depend on whether the Saints aim for him in the second or third. Um and I'm a big Kyle Trask fan myself to be honest with you guys. Um I mean he was fourth in Heisman voting last year. I spoke with his teammate Clifford Taylor the fourth on a uh he he was a guest on my podcast i shot him a text and i was like hey man can you give me a quote on like kyle trask and kind of talk to me about him a little bit and i mean the dude the dude went from being absolutely nothing at florida to taking over and being fourth Mm -hmm. in heisman voting so i mean that kind of that's the kind of morale that i like to see is in a saints quarterback for sure um other than that nick bolton's kind of been linked to the saints quite a bit linebacker from missouri um he's got great physical attributes um rush the passer great tackler reminds me a lot of demario davis so having two demario davises on the defense will obviously be Mm -hmm. a very good thing um another guy they're looking at is greg newsom corner from northwestern absolutely locked down corner he does get a little bit grabby at times so obviously that's something that they would want to work on with him he fits perfectly Um, here down there then (laughs) yeah he fit he fits perfect other than that the only the only kind of shocker that i've heard is that the only way they would not select a linebacker or cornerback in the first round is if mac jones is available Mm -hmm. um obviously it's not looking like he will be with san francisco at that number three spot but like i said it's the nfl draft you never know um i'm not hearing too much about the saints potentially trading up obviously it's a possibility um it's just going to be hard to trade up in a range where they could get mac jones so unless Mac Jones or really just one of like the top three or four quarterbacks is on the market, if Justin Fields tends to slide, um, the Saints could potentially trade up for him. That's what I'm hearing. Um, other than that, unless one of those two guys are on the board, it's most likely going to be a linebacker or a cornerback. I like that. I like it. Yeah, it's good. That's good. That's good info right there. And yeah, obviously that's what I think a lot of Saints fans are hoping for. And what a draft. I mean. A- Every draft is very interesting to me, very intriguing um, to most NFL fans as well. But this draft in particular, it's just going to be all over the board, especially if you're a Saints fan, because you know I'm not one of those guys who is into tanking for the sakes of um, better draft picks and whatnot. Like if you have a good team, try to go out all out, and I'm glad the Saints did. But boy, would it have been great to have a better draft pick in this draft because you you figure five quarterbacks, five linebackers, five cornerbacks are going to be going in the first round, right? Um, the, the the order and then the placement is going to be um, you, you know up up in the air as of right now. We'll we'll see what happens draft night. But for the Saints, it would have been fantastic to have a tr- top twenty or like even a twenty one twenty two draft pick in this in this draft because twenty eight is just such an awkward spot right here. Just like we mentioned with the four and the eight and the top ten, when you know you don't have any glaring um, needs immediately that kind of fit other than somebody like Kyle Pitts th- down there. For the Saints, it's like. Man, it would have been great to have a pick where you know, okay, one of either Horn, Farley, Newsom. I mean, I think Newsom can drop to 28, but the closer we get, I don't know. Um, JOK would have been great, but I, he's not going to fall to 28. Bolton could could be picked early. Um, so it's, it's just such an up and down. Mac Jones, of course, now with the 49ers trading up. I mean, those five quarterbacks could go. Uh, before the Saints, you know, are even close to being on the clock. So um, with their needs knowing what we know about them it is just such a weird spot for the saints and i would love for them to have a better pick without having to sacrifice any sort of draft capital to move up like they have in drafts recently but uh i love that i I would love newsom um i would love mac jones um i would love bolton i think i think bolton is probably the most likely to be there at 28 for the saints if they stay put so it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, but, yeah, I really wish the Saints had a better pick in this draft because there's a lot of guys I would love that are probably going to be picked before 28 rolls around. Yep. But um, they'll do their due diligence. They know their guys. We've, we have we see it all the time. They will trade up for their guys. They don't care what they give up. If they have their guy, they will go up and get their guy. Um, and I do love that about this team. So, if to, only... to, Yeah, to kind of add on to what you just said, I think, a, I think 
the Saints are probably going to actually end up getting the best number 28 pick they could ever possibly get in future drafts. Just because just there's so much talent in the first two oh, rounds sure. of this draft. I mean, there's like you mentioned, there's five quarterbacks that's going to go quick. There's going to be five linebackers, five receivers that are all going to go super quick corners yeah. as well. But a lot of people are sleeping on the offensive line class this year. Which like, the Saints is, love to go for in the draft. They do. They do, but I don't. I don't know. We'll see. It depends. Yeah. If if one of these top notch dudes are available, then they could. Um, but like, there's so many very talented linemen, and I think right. that those middle of the pack teams are going to be more likely to take these linemen than anything else. I mean, obviously, Panay Sewell is going to be a top ten pick, but then you got guys like Tevin Jenkins, and you got mm-hmm. all sorts of other dudes, man. Like, there's just so many. Like, there's just literally too many to name. Elijah yeah. Vera Tucker from USC, very very right. talented offensive line. Linemen. And so many of these linemen are very, very good at also bumping to the inside and playing guard. So they're versatile, just like Andrews Pete was whenever he, we drafted him. Um, mm-hmm. and st- I mean, it's just there's so much versatility in this draft overall. Like even a lot of the corners can double as safeties. A lot of the linebackers yeah. can double as safety. Safeties can double as linebackers. I mean, it's just there's a lot of talent in this year's draft, and it's very exciting. So I think that some of these linebackers and corners are going to fall really far into the draft just because of that. Um, I really hope quarter- so. Yeah, I mean, I think Greg Newsom will definitely be there. Nick mm-hmm. Bolton, I definitely think, is going to be there as well. The only thing that kind of stinks about that is that the Bucks are going to be able to get a very, very good, talented player with that last pick of the draft. So, obviously, right. there's a there's a lot of good talent, and I definitely think that the Saints would get a very capable starter without having to move up. So, I'm very excited. Watch the Bucks straight up for Kyle Pitts. Watch them just <laughs> give up their old draft capital to get him. We're, we're worrying about the wrong NFC South team that's going to get Pitts, guys. But uh, no, I yeah, I, if there's a run on lineman in the middle of the draft, which I've seen in a lot of mocks too, that would make me so happy because yeah, you it guaranteed the Saints are just going to get somebody really talented and also be BPA or uh, be fitting their needs. It'll be BPA most likely and fitting their needs because at 28. You know, if all these cornerbacks, these linebackers and quarterbacks are gone, even the top, you know, first round D tackles, which the Saints sort of have a somewhat of a depth hole at you. you, I mean, it could be upgraded or whatnot. D end. Um, I really like Carl Granderson's workouts lately, though. So I think that he he could be the guy who could fill in for Mr. Two firsts if he doesn't step up. But uh, if 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 the Saints are there at 28 and a lot of those guys are gone, they're just going to have to pick BPA, which not a lot of Saints fans might like, but there's a good chance that they could go BPA while also filling in a need, and I think that's the dream there at 28 for the Saints on on draft night. Yep, couldn't agree with you guys more. The only thing I'll add on is if only Javon Williams caught that touchdown pass, maybe we're oh. picking maybe, maybe we're picking a that's little a higher point. than 28. <laughs> that's a good point, but then, but then we would have lost to the Bears, and it would have been even more embarrassing. So yeah, we would have lost. I, I, I would have rather won and had a deep draft pick then than that so yeah okay Agreed. respectable nickelodeon <laughs> right. hey that that mvp is a it's a pretty prestigious award around here we'll take that very lightly now. uh so with that being said guys we'll take a quick break coming up next we'll get into a little bit uh it's a free agency talk maybe one guy who could stand out who could uh, has the opportunity to stand out uh, this upcoming year in the po- first post Breeze era in New Orleans. Guys, listening to the Full Price Saints podcast. All righty, guys, welcome back here, Alec, Dayton, and Michael in studio. I guess not really studio, but we're on the pod nonetheless. So uh, we'll go a little off script here. Kind of just thought about this off the top of my brain here, uh, real quick, Michael. Um, are there any free agents? You know, now the wave two of free agency has kind of begun. These veteran, a lot of top quality veteran players, I might add are going to take these one-year, you know, mid-range deals with a lot of incentive to try and, you know, make the most of their opportunities and earn the most money uh, before the salary cap gets back to where it was next offseason. So are there any, you know, me, you know, veteran players you think maybe would be a good fit for the Saints, uh, whether it's the scheme-wise or if it's the money-wise? Who do you think are some names that, you know, maybe we could or should keep an eye on? Whew. Oh, man. Considering we man. have, like, two point three ish in change yeah. <laughs> not a whole lot to work with but <laughs> it post yeah. post draft will determine a lot i think for for many other teams as well not just the saints but post draft it's gonna we'll have another free agency wave i bet yeah for sure um i mean some of the names that kind of stand out 
AJ Boye, I mean, he's a free agent still currently somehow. Um, he could obviously be an option for the Saints who need a corner. Um, Quan Alexander, who was recently released yeah. by the Saints, he could mm-hmm. come back on a restructured deal. Um, if the Saints are still interested, Jadavian Clowney's still out there. Um, if they decided to get back into that um, swing of things. Um, uh, if we wanted to add some receiving help, we got Golden Tate. Let's see, we can we can go a lot of different guys here. I mean, <laughs> Vince Williams at linebacker, Marquise Goodwin, KJ Wright. I mean, there's just all sorts of guys that we could go for. Um, Kenny Vaccaro, if we wanted to add some safety depth, Josh Norman. I mean, there's just there's all sorts of different guys we could go for. I think we definitely need to focus on corner and linebacker um, for sure. Definitely add some depth there because right now we're looking a little weak. Um, it would definitely be nice to bring in a veteran like A.J. Boye to the squad, um, maybe even getting that Richard Sherman sweepstakes. I know we're one of the f- yeah. like last 10 teams to yeah. contact him, so um, I think his asking price might be a little bit too high, which is the only reason a deal hasn't gotten done. Um, obviously, his connections with Chris Richard could get a deal done for a little bit cheaper. Um, so obviously getting Richard Sherman on the squad and then drafting a young rookie corner to learn under him would be great. Um, but yeah, those are just kind of a couple guys that kind of stick out to me. Maybe even Alex Smith potentially, um, depending on a lot of things. I mean, I just feel like Alex Smith would, would be able to teach, have like kind of the same impact that, um, Drew Brees had on, on Jameis Winston, to be honest with you. I feel like Alex Smith has a lot of knowledge to give and he's gone through a ton of crazy life experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like maybe Alex Smith, um, could be a good solid backup, but I think he's yeah. kind of linked to the Bears or some other teams right now. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't gotten signed yet. I, w- I would have expected him to be signed by now. Um, I think he's probably I, waiting until after the draft. To be honest that's with you, exactly. Yeah. That's what I. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. And I think the Saints, because it really depends. First off, it depends on I think if the extensions get done. I'm not going to hold my breath for these extensions for Lattimore and Ramchick. Uh, because just based off of how the Camara extension went, they really waited to the last minute, like a day before the season kicked off last year is when they extended Camara. So I think that they might do the same, just wait it out. But it would be smart of them to do it as soon as possible just based off of the amount of cap space that it saves them, but also you need to negotiate good deals for your team. The player wants a good deal for them, so you know this, this could go on for months and months. So I'm not going to hold my breath for that. But the other big dependent, like we were just talking about, is the draft. If the Saints go cornerback in the first round, there's really no need to get somebody like Boye or Sherman. But if they don't go cornerback in the first round, or or if they really just go with one cornerback, kind of in the mid to late rounds, they still have a hole there. Um, and signing somebody like Boye or Richard Sherman, even for one year, two years, is would be just fantastic. Not only would they, you know, fill in the playing time that we need there at the second cornerback spot but the amount of um veteran presence that they have and you know the knowledge that they can give these guys would be you know invaluable so um i would like that a lot same with linebacker uh you know if they if they don't go with a linebacker that they totally love in the draft they could definitely sign somebody on a bridge deal and then you know try again next draft because that teams are always looking forward to the draft after and and even the draft after that just to see you know hey if we don't hit on this position this year here's what we got to do in free agency um but keep in mind uh let's not sign him to too long of a contract because next year we could get a really good guy in the first or second third round that we you know could could plug there and be on a cheaper deal and you know have him on the team for a lot longer than a veteran who is you know over the age of 28 especially so yeah i think it really all depends on the draft i'm excited for i'm just really excited for the draft this year i mean i know the saints are picking way deep in the first round but uh the top 10 is going to be exciting. Trades are still going to be coming in. There's going to be a lot of draft night trades, I bet, if none get done here soon. So um, I'm excited to see, and that'll shape the future of a lot of these teams, uh, even just for this upcoming rest of the offseason and the summer. Uh, this draft has a lot of weight to it, so I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. couldn't agree with you guys anymore. Uh, one more thing before we end it here, or wrap it up here today, guys. Uh, give me one player, both of you. Um, this, we've seen the Carl Granison workout videos. So give me one player, whether it's offensive or defense, doesn't matter. Um, who do you think really is primed for, a, you know, a breakout or a maybe a surprise Trey Hendrickson type year that we kind of just didn't see coming? We'll start with mm. start with Mike. Who's our guest? He's been a good guest today. We'll start with Mike. Yeah. yeah, first <laughs> yeah. start start with Michael first. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to mention that a little bit earlier. I think Carl Granderson's the obvious choice here. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I've, I've just kind of seen flashes since since we signed him as an undrafted free agent. Really, I mean, ever like it's just something about him. It's just you can just kind of tell that he's going to have a dominant year. And I've been telling people that are in you know fantasy leagues that that draft defensive players to take Carl Granderson, and they're like, why? I'm just like, just trust me, bro. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I tweeted it the other day that Carl <laughs> Granderson's going to have a huge season. And I just wanted to make sure I was on the wave before anybody else. So, you know, I could throw that at Saints Twitter's face a little bit too. But <laughs> there you nah, go. I'm just kidding. I love Saints Twitter. I love y'all. I promise. Um, <laughs> but, it's a love-hate relationship. It really no, is. No. For, There's for, no hate. For, for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. For, for me it is. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not speaking for Michael. It's love-hate for me. It's all love. All love. Um, hey, hey, your haters, your haters are just, they're just fans, bro. That's you true. Me? You feel me? It's okay. But uh yeah, anyways, Carl Granderson. <laughs> I could I could definitely see him putting up double digit sacks. You know, it's gonna be a big year for him and he's he's cheap too, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um I just hope that the Saints are able to to sign him long term because I, I just I see so much potential in Carl Granderson. Obviously when his career started he had that little that little mishap where he got arrested or whatever the case was. But mm-hmm. you know, he obviously learned from that. He hasn't had to serve any jail time or anything. He's that's all the past, and the Saints have kept him on the roster because they clearly see something in him, and it wasn't severe enough to, you know, be anything significant. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Carl Granderson went out there and had double digit sacks. Um, and I also wouldn't be surprised if the Saints ended up deciding to keep him over Marcus Davenport in the future. Hmm. So, I mean, if he has a big year, obviously that's going to be the big storyline. It always has been the storyline with Marcus Davenport is is he going to be better than the defensive end he's rotating with? And so far. It's safe to say he hasn't been. I mean, yep. And yep. this year is going to be a big defining moment. I mean, everybody knew Trey Hendrickson had potential, but we didn't know he had that kind of potential. Same with like mm-hmm. Alex Okafor. Like, I mean, just he, Marcus Davenport's always been like, co- I mean, just kind of compared to these defensive ends that he's always been kind of teamed with and rotated with, and he, he's never won the battle in my opinion. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two stack up against each other. Yeah, Granderson was a top twenty-five, top thirty draft talent, uh, but his you know off the field issues is what hurt him. Um, Saints took a chance on him, and and yeah, we've seen we've seen it pay off even a little bit um, off his little playing time that he's had in the NFL. So yeah, I think that he's an obvious choice too. It depends on uh, who the Saints go in the first round. If they go with a guy like Nick Bolton or uh, trade up for a guy like Jay OK, my answer will you know, not actually be the answer. But if they don't go with the linebacker in the first couple of rounds, I think Zach Bond might be due for a breakout. I mean, OK, it, OK. Whether or not this guy fits the scheme is still TBD, uh, but I think that Zach Bond is the type of guy who can fly around and also be able to rush the quarterback to the point where it doesn't really matter what scheme you play him in. You tell him to do something, he's going to be able to do it. Um, I love that he can kind of play um, edge and outside. He, he's he's, you know, he's kind of got the um, instincts for that I, I, I've seen on film, but uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting because I was expecting him to get more playing time last year. Uh, Anzalone kind of was beating him out for that, and he also, obviously, with the Saints going with a lot of nickel, um, he, he he didn't he didn't see the field too often, and then trading for Quan Alexander really just kind of uh, expedited him. Uh, so it's going to be now with Anzalone out, now with Alexander most likely not on the team anymore, not coming back. Um, if the Saints don't draft a guy in the first round or the second round, I could definitely see Zach Bond getting a lot of playing time and and potentially breaking out on offense. I'll just quickly say, oh, you got two. And I'm saying this partially because, one, I want him to break out. And number two, because Nick Underhill just released an article on him. Uh, Trey Oh, uh, you're picking my guy. Okay. <laughs> Verti- oh, my, my bad, man. Yeah, no, no, yeah. you're good. You you're know, good. I'll, I'll let you talk. Okay. Vertical threat. I think that he can be a receiver for whatever quarterback's going to be playing for the Saints, uh, be a quality guy. But I'll, 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 let you talk, I'll let you talk most about him since that's your guy. No, I'm glad no, we're on the no. same page. Yeah, we are on the same page here over at the uh, Full Press Saints podcast. Uh, one note a lot about Zach Bond, I think why he could be prime for a breakout, breakout year. People forget coming in, out of Wisconsin, he was an outside you know, 3-4 linebacker. No training camp, no real offseason or mm-hmm. OTAs to really adjust to a 4-3 defense. Now Goodell is saying that there's going to be a lot more in-person uh, – contact and you know workouts and training camp OTAs this year so hopefully he'll get more time to actually you know learn the system of defense so I think he that's gonna be big for him uh which look I think it's real simple I think we all know the last the last two maybe three years of Drew Brees' career we knew the Saints could not throw the ball down the field right 
I think we all can agree if we could have a if we could have thrown the ball this year down the field, we go to the Super Bowl. Fair to say. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I now w- whether it's Jameis or Taysom or enter a random quarterback who could be played maybe an Alex Smith guy like Michael mentioned earlier, um, I think you could really see Traquan develop the most or de- benefit the most from a quarterback who has the ability to get the ball down the field because as, as you mentioned. Uh, they, Nick and Hill put out a great article earlier today about how at one point Traquan was, you know, the best, one of the best deep field threats in college football coming out of uh, UCF. So I think it's not crazy to say that he could be a guy who really could break out this year in his third year, much like Trey Hendrickson did uh, this year. So I'm looking forward to that the most. I know people talk about Deontay Harris, you know, being the D down the field threat guy this year with Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill, but I think Traquan Smith could be a sneaky guy. Um, I'm hyped about it. I think he really could be poised for a breakout year. He kind of has these moments where, hey, history, he's part of it. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm Don't all for sleep it. on Marquez Callaway. Hey, yes, yes. I feel because, and that's the thing. I feel like, I feel like Callaway, because of, you know, undrafted guy coming in, filled his mold really, really well for the Saints last year. Surprised a lot of guys. I was actually shocked when he went undrafted. I really thought he was going to be a guy who was going to get drafted in the mid rounds comes out balls out and i i feel like he kind of put trey Quan on the back burners yep um so uh yeah Cal- I, th- I think callaway is in a lot of saints fans minds like the number two receiver off the bat when really in reality it should be based off like on paper should be trey Quan smith um but uh, yeah no callaway is a freaking baller i I, lo- I love that we have him on the team yeah i couldn't agree with you guys any more than that um that's about to wrap things up today gentlemen any last words or remarks actually um Michael, where can I find you out on Twitter and all your work at, actually? Yeah, so all my work's going to be published, usually on my Twitter. I just post it all there, at Michael Balco Jr. Um, So I usually just post everything there. Other than that, I'm on NFLanalysis.net, NBAanalysis.net, Who Dat Dish, Whole Nine Yards, Google Search Me. You'll find everything. Uh, (laughs) I like it. He's got the Google. We don't don't got the Google. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey you will you will it's okay <laughs> but yeah that's that's about it for me all right somebody guys. get this man a wikipedia page <laughs> <laughs> you might make it your own you get those now you could actually it could yeah. Yeah, i'm gonna make yeah. one right now <laughs> <laughs> but uh once again michael thank you so much for coming on hopefully we didn't you know terrorize you or scare you off or anything like that so um never never <laughs> <laughs> That's going to wrap things up, guys. Uh, another great episode of Full Price Saints Upgrade. Follow us on Twitter at SaintsFPC. Until then, we'll see you guys next time.